800 of them. I have never had one, I'll be honest with you, that was accurate on anything. Okay? Really? I, 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 really. I, I test them out. And I test them out before I go on the air. I ask them certain questions. They ask me certain things. I, I find that most people that are mediums are really good at asking key questions so they can come back with a certain answer that will halfway fit the situation. And then a lot of people want to believe what they're being told. And I, I, I'm sorry, I don't want to be negative, really? but I mean, I, I'm just being from what I have experienced as a talk show host for all these years. Okay. No, and no, that's a wonderful example. Um, okay. Interesting. Well, I, the, like the last medium I had on, okay, which I'm not going to mention her name because I don't want to get sued, but she's very famous. <laughs> okay. Now, she asked me, okay, a question about something, okay? Like something I lost. I totally lied to her, okay? I said I lost my motorcycle keys, okay? Well, she did whatever she did, and then she told me where it was. And then during the break, she said, go look, and it'll be there. Well, I'll be honest with you. They were in my my bedroom in the vase where I always keep them. But I didn't want to, you know, I came back and I said, hey, you were right. Because, you know, I have to be honest with you, my show is entertainment, you know, and if anything more exciting comes out of that, then that's great. But I have found that most mediums are good at manipulating people by asking certain questions that are vague, you know, and they will follow it up with a second or a third thing. And then they go, "Okay, see, I answered your uh, question. Now, the scientist is on here. What do you think? Well, it's a technique called cold reading, and by reading micro, you know, involuntary micro expressions, a skilled cold reader can really <laughs> make it sound like they're they know what they're doing. You know, it's just by you know, there's involuntary muscle ticks or reactions to certain words. If they get in the right area, a good cold reader has studied and knows where to take these, you know, these little nonverbal cues and, you know, lead the the victim, <laughs> I'll just call it that, the victim into really telling the medium or the mind, you know, the mentalist or whatever, into answering their own question. That's and what I've seen. Keep in mind, a lot of pe- people that go to mediums are a lot of times they're in grief. They're they don't want the truth. Basically, if you're desperate enough that you're paying some somebody like that idiot that had the series on sci-fi, John Edwards, or was that him? Mm-hmm. Anyhow. You know, he would do this a lot, this cold reading thing in front of a whole studio audience and pick his mark. He would see somebody, oh, I, I see a name, uh, a guy, Joe. And then he would throw out these questions. It's sort of like that game where you answer yes or no, yes or no, and it leads you down a logic tree to an answer. We see them, something like that on Facebook. He used to be able to buy this little digital game. You know, it would arrive at an answer through an algorithm. And that's all cold reading is. And I think one of the problems with trying to tell the future is the future isn't set. You, I don't think it's, it's a fluid, dynamic thing that's going on. You know, a medium, you say even if somebody's legit, they see next Wednesday from tonight they see next wednesday so much is going to happen so many possibilities so many probabilities are going to collapse and 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 kick the the vision down a different path i don't think there's a way to see even with i even with technology i don't think you could see a future it's too fluid well, that, that's the thing, though. A true reader is going to tell you 
what I see happening on Wednesday is this. Now, there are numerous things that can happen that will change the outcome of that. Uh, you know, you, you do a tarot reading, for example. Mm -hmm. the, the reading is going to tell you what the cards see or what the spirits tell you through the cards in, say, a month. Because a lot of people do a monthly reading. Some people are, uh, they, they want it more often, they do a daily reading or have a daily reading done. And those cards can change. The outcome can change. Different variables through life or time and space can change to change the outcome of what that reading was. One of the yeah, I, went I had when I did, when I used to read very accurate tarot readings for people, it dawned on me, did this happen? Because, did I see, foretell what was going to happen with this tarot reading? Or did I set up a self-fulfilling prophecy by telling this person, this is what I see? Did they then go down a logic tree that made that happen, whether vol voluntarily or involuntarily? Did this happen because I planted the seed of the idea into their head? And that's kind of why I quit reading tarot. I didn't want to take that kind of responsibility for somebody's life. Well, I think right. you nailed it right on the nail. <laughs> now, i got to ask one other I question. Went to the oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Well, I'm going to oh, Okay, a question. Remote <laughs> viewing. My friend who passed on, Art Bell, had a major... I'm not going to mention his name again because, you know, I don't want to be sued. But... He was on Art Bell's show so many times making all these predictions, like the kill shot, mm -hmm. telling people where they should move mm -hmm. to. I know somebody actually moved to Australia because of him uh, and sold everything and took a huge loss and, and ended up in a divorce. Okay, well, it never happened. And again, you know, <laughs> his predictions of his remote viewing, none of them ever came True. Now, the FBI, I know somebody that was retired from the FBI, said they would get mediums calling up all the time, telling them where people's bodies were. And you know what? They never, they never were accurate. Never. And, and, and the, the point is, you know, they had an idea as well. Hey, if you know where the body is, hey, we'll give you a shovel. You go get it and, and call us. I, I think uh, there's another problem with if you're accurate, you're usually going to be quiet because of the fact that what we found on the team, if you are accurate, you know where the missing person is, you become a suspect. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Automatically. Uh, I mean, we've, we've, we've been dead on. We've helped people find people, haven't we, Megan? <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> and, you know, you automatically get ridiculed. You automatically uh, get labeled. Well, how do you know where they were? How do you, you know? And that hasn't happened directly with this team, but just saying, it makes you leery because and it gets really frustrating when the team's telling you they are here. Well, now what? Who do I call? The FBI is not going to listen. Local law enforcement, they'll, they'll just, they sure in the hell ain't going to listen. So it gets frustrating, which is why we really don't touch missing persons cases anymore. Well, I got something. The case, uh, Casey, case, okay? I had a famous medium on my show that she claimed she's the one that solved the case. Okay? Mm -hmm. And she wrote a book, and she's been on the, all the talk show uh, networks. You know, mm -hmm. all the, from coast to coast, all the way down, right? Well, it's really funny. If she solved the case, why did the postman find the body? Right. Okay, she, you know, that's that's the type of thing. It, it, there's some mediums out there that are actually taking advantage of people, and that's what's bad because you know they set the person up, like you mentioned earlier. If you sit there and tell somebody something psychologically without them realizing it, they can make that situation happen. Well, think of this: uh, too many people hear, "Oh, psychic so and so solved the case." They take it, like Coop and I used to say in our original show we did together several years ago, do your own research. So the famous yep. psychic that people are already, who want to believe, 
are already inclined to believe on blind faith. Mm-hmm. If they did a little research, looked at it, you know, looked at a hometown newspaper where the crime happened, and saw the outcome, that would put an end to this, uh, you know, this pop culture phenomenon, BS psychic stuff right away. Because they would find out there is, to the best of my knowledge, there has never been a case certified where a psychic has actually broken the case, found the body. A lot of them claim that. Yeah. And the problem is when you, you say, no, your your psychic's full of crap, you're really, you're preaching to the choir. There's the ones that are going to, that already know that. And the ones who don't know it, don't want to know it. And nothing you tell them is going to, is going to change their minds because they want to believe in that. Well, there's people out there that claim they're a psychic or a medium that they're convinced they're one, and they're not. This, this, no. And I see that so often, and it's frustrating. So, you know, that that's my two whole cents for, uh, on mediums. And I don't want to offend anybody out there that's listening, okay? I, I know I got people probably really mad. I'm going to get a couple hundred emails again. <laughs> so like last time, I opened my mouth about, you know, politics. But I, I will say but, that yeah, I haven't seen a real medium in all my years in broadcasting that was accurate on anything other than, you know, general information, general, and, and, and they, okay. they're good at manipulating so, people. So Nikki's in the chat room. She's offended. You need to get a hold of Nikki after the show and have her on your show. Well, I, I'm more than happy. Yeah. I, I have everybody on my show that wants to come on. You know, it, it, it's a show. I mean, you know, it's entertainment. And if they can convince me otherwise, then the, I, I will say over the air, I'm sorry. On 27 radio stations, I'll say, I'm sorry. I made a mistake. One of the things I've, you know, I have had some intuitive things happen. Coop knows my story. But every certain way I go home, I get uh, this tickle that tells me that there's a person buried there, kind of hidden in plain sight. Every time I drive by this little area and I don't want and and it comes into that well do I tell the police and okay why did you now how did you know you know say and I, I really don't think there's anybody there. I just think I have a really active imagination and some kind of combination clicked, and I've convinced myself there's somebody buried there. <laughs> but anyway, that's beside the point. You run into that. Well, how did you know this when nobody else did? And all? you set yourself up. I think real psychics, though, or the, if there's any out there that really have that ability, they're probably afraid to use it because it's not mainstream. It's not an accepted thing. You know, face it, you know, all of us that believe in this could probably fill, you know, populate a city the size of Dallas and have room left over. If everybody in the world that believed in it was in one place. And I think the, I think that if the, you have somebody like that, they're going to be very leery of sharing it. I think the ones that are out there touring with their books and their TV series and their web pages, uh, or the I'm ones too that sure that they're I don't think they're legit. And the ones that want well, you, you have to, to go, the, popularity. The ones that want you, you have to, to go by how much they charge too. Yeah, that's what I was just going to yeah. say. Yeah, they want you to call them, uh, you know, and pay right. fifty dollars or a hundred dollars an hour for them to give a reading. And I, 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 an I hour. Yeah, or more. An hour, that's cheap. 50 bucks a minute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I had I actually went to one and she was legit. She told me straight up from the beginning. She says, "Don't ask me anything futuristic. I will not and do not read future. You can ask me present, you can ask me past, but I do not do future." She read Aura. She was 
fifty an hour or thirty 